Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with the best deck in Clash Royale to level up and learn so you can climb to 6,500 trophies, Arena 18, and unlock every card in Clash Royale. When you're climbing through the arenas, the decks that you face are absolutely unpredictable. But with this deck's defenses, as long as you don't overspend Elixir early on in the game, you'll always be able to defend. And if they think about building up a massive golem push, you can slow them down with the Ice Wizard Tornado while the Tombstone Skeletons damage everything down. The best part about the deck is when you use all of your resources to level it up and you get better at the game, this graveyard deck will still be strong. A lot of decks that people upgrade fall off really fast after they reach a certain arena. But this deck is consistently played in the top 10 in the world, so no matter how good you get, it will always be a great choice to play. And card levels don't matter as much with this deck. Even if you're playing against a level 14 Hog Rider and you have a level 9 Tornado, you can still pull that to the King Tower and get a great Elixir trade. Once you enter Arena 16 at 5,500 trophies, you'll definitely want to use the Skeleton King. But until then, a Knight or Valkyrie will work wonderfully. Let's go jump straight some games with the best deck to climb ladder and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag to support the channel. All right, so jump into the game against the Dark Ghost. We never want to be the person that makes a first play with this deck. If you do and you go in for an aggressive graveyard too early on, sometimes your opponent can just punish you on the other side. Let's say you go in for a graveyard plus a baby dragon. That's going to cost almost your entire elixir bank, nine elixir. And if you go in for a poison, that's going to cost you 13. You have no elixir to defend if that's the case. So your opponent can apply opposite lane aggression, maybe defend with a goblin gang, and then take your tower while you do like maybe a thousand damage with your graveyard. It's never a trade that you want to take. So this guy is going to have three musketeers with an ice golem with a monk. Okay, so the good thing about our deck is since we've got poison and no fireball, you're able to get a lot of value against monks. Even if he goes in for a heal spirit, he's not going to be able to heal up his musketeers, and the musketeers will die here. He's going to do a lot of damage, but, you know, it's not the end of the world when we take 500 damage at the start of the game. We give him a well played because he de definitely deserved to earn that damage, and he tried to go in for some cheeky strategy with the heal spirit at the river. A lot of people on ladder will do some gimmickry, aggressive strategies, and when you've got this graveyard deck, no matter what they're playing, you're probably going to be able to defend if you play it well enough. So he also stops the baby dragon from crossing the river, and the reason that he did that is he didn't want the baby dragon to tank for the graveyard. So then his princess tower is able to focus on my graveyard skeletons, so he's able to get a lot cleaner of a defense. Also, since everyone's running Monk and Phoenix, you can distract the Phoenix with the Tombstone. Monk doesn't do reflection damage against anything in your deck besides Ice Wizard and Baby Dragon, which doesn't really matter because your win condition is going to be the big graveyard getting on top of the tower to deal all of your damage. So I'm going to go in for Barbarian Barrel here, and the reason why I do that is it's going to tank for the Skeleton, so it's actually going to be kind of a pseudo win condition. I'm going to go in for a Baby Dragon here, and then I'm going to go in for a Graveyard. And if you see someone go for an Elixir Collector in the back, you can Graveyard directly on top of the Elixir Collector, and then the Skeletons will fully surround it. So no matter what version of deck that they've got with three Musketeers, it's practically impossible for them to fully counter the Graveyard Skeleton. You guys noticed that he dropped, you know, his three Elixir Royal Ghosts, but it didn't matter. The Ghost got ghosted by the Skeletons, and the Skeletons went onto the Elixir Collector instead. Also, if we really want to, I think I'm just going to go for a Poison here so we can kill the Musketeers. And I'm going to go in for an Ice Wizard on top of the Royal Ghost, hopefully. Nice. So I won't take too much damage here. I'm expecting him to make a prediction on my Barbarian Barrel, so I'm not going to go and give him a free Monk Barbarian Barrel. It always reflects back the Barbarian Barrel, so you have to wait for the Monk ability to pass. And then I can go in for a Barbarian Barrel to pull back the, the annoying Elite Barbarian so they can't break through. If you guys are ever struggling against Mega Knight or Elite Barbarians or Bridge Bam, this might be the best deck in the game to counter it. Especially since you have Tornado, so you're able to get some juicy King activations as well. I'm going to go in for a Poison, and then I can maybe go in for a Graveyard if we get the right opportunity. He's still playing well enough to not give me too many of those. So I'm going to Baby Dragon on top of the Musketeer when it's in vicinity of my tower, and then I'm immediately going to go for a Graveyard because the Ice Golem isn't going to give him too much value. High chance he goes in for like a Monk and then maybe even like Elite Barbarians or something, but the Baby Dragon's going to splash onto the tower, and the Skeletons are surrounding him. Let's go. The Barbarian locks onto the tower to deal even more damage, and I can Tornado, so the Monk can't lock onto my Barbarian. But at the same time, I, you know, kind of tornadoed the Ice Golem to block my Barbarian. So the plan was there. The execution, maybe not the best. It's totally fine. I can poison on top of the Musketeers. They should die inside the poison because the poison slows them down. So it's going to make our opponent frown a little bit. I want to go for the Baby Dragon in the far back. So if he clicks the Monk ability, he can't reflect back the Baby Dragon shots. And then I'm going to go in for a Tombstone. Definitely in a Barbarian Barrel on top of the Heal Spirit. So it can't, you know, heal up the Musketeer or anything like that. And I can go for an Ice Wizard and maybe just defend with... Ice Wizard. I don't want to spend any extra Elixir there. Even if we eat the Musketeer damage, it's not the end of the world because I want to be able to conserve my Elixir advantage so then I can go in for a Graveyard. So that's pretty important to do in these types of situations when you know that your opponent has three Musketeers. If they get enough Elixir for the three Musketeers, they can decimate your Baby Dragon and then defend the Graveyard way faster. But since I had Elixir advantage, I was able to go in for that Graveyard just a little bit faster 
completely encapsulate his musketeers inside the poison and make sure that he loses them here. So this is Tornado and make sure he <laughs> just goes in for a monk at the river unsupported without any friends, without any companions in life. And I think we can go in for another graveyard here and just walk with a win. Even if he goes in for the monk ability, the best part about this is I'm up so much elixir and I can do such a cost efficient defense with the tombstone that I can just throw more graveyards at him. And as I said, this deck works really well in double and triple elixir because this guy was trying to waddle his way through with elite barbarians and bridge bam. He was always going face first into tombstones, ice wizards, and tornadoes. And I was able to get directly on his tower with my graveyard skeletons to feast for that delicious damage. All right, we got another one against JJ Cool. What's up? This sounds like the type of player to be DJing while dropping the Mega Knights at the river. Let's see if he does it. I want to see panic at the disco, man. Spam everything you got. Okay, so me cycling the knight in the back probably wasn't the right strategy. Whenever you see skeletons, you can kind of ignore them because they don't do tower damage to you. Minor plus skeletons makes me feel, oh, I thought it was going to be a balloon deck. But then he goes in for another elixir collector. Remember when we were playing as elixir collector before? Is this going to be phoenix spam? I feel like if there was ever a time to be playing against a phoenix spam player, this would be the guy. He's showing arrows. Oh, he definitely has a Phoenix Spam deck right now. Oh my goodness. I need to go for Barbarian Barrel in the middle so he can't click his Golden Knight ability. And I'm also going to poison the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side because we've got so much damage with the Knight. It's kind of like an alternative win condition if he just ignores it. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but he clicked the Golden Knight ability and he just got shut down by the Princess Tower. Denied. She ghosted him right now. She never texted him back. She's like, get out of here, man, you creeper. Maybe I can go in for another graveyard. Remember the last interaction where I was able to go for the graveyard on top of his Elixir Collector in the back and I got such a good trade? Oh, he, he, yep, he has the Phoenix Spam deck. This deck is absolutely everywhere. Even after the Phoenix nerf, Phoenix is still the best card in the game. So if you spam more of them than your opponent, you're likely going to win. Typically with this deck, when you play against a Phoenix, Mega Minion, or Inferno Dragon, you can't win battles at the river that well. So typically when I play against those decks, since my Ice Wizards and Baby Dragons die in those matchups, what I'll do is I'll just use the Barbarian Barrel and I'll Barbarian Barrel, and it will cross the river guaranteed, and then it will still tank for the Graveyard. So you go Graveyard, then you go for the Barbarian Barrel, because the Barbarian Barrel, if you drop it before the Graveyard, you're wasting time. If you Barbarian Barrel after you Graveyard, the Barbarian Barrel still tanks for the Graveyard, so it's more efficient. If that makes any sense, you don't want to drop your Barbarian Barrel too early, because then it will die to your opponent's tower a little bit faster. So always drop it after you drop the Graveyard, if you do it really quickly. Okay, so he's taking 2,000 damage straight to the base on the right-hand side. We already know what's going to happen. He's going to drop like an onslaught of Phoenixes, and he's going to make me a sad sir. However, oh my gosh, that is double Elixir Collector. That is double the value. The Knight's tanking for the graveyard, so this is great. It's going to poison that. I can't believe the Elixir insanity that we're about to get from that poison. And notice how he went for the Phoenix on top of my Baby Dragon to kill it instantaneously. That's what happens every single time if you are playing a graveyard deck and you're expecting to get value. So I'm going to go in for a Tombstone here so then the Golden Knight doesn't dash on us. Even if he goes in for a Tornado, the funny thing is you can't Tornado a building. So that's why I saved the Knight on defense uh, against the Phoenix. And then I saved my to Tombstone against the Golden Knight. Because if he Tornadoes, he's not going to get any value ever. Because the building's just chilling there like, bro, I'm immune to that spell. Okay, I might be screwed. I don't know. I hope that we can shut down this Phoenix. I need to get like an Ice Wizard here so we can finish off the egg. Fortunately, the skeletons are popping off. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I just freaked out and bar barreled. Okay, guys. <laughs> when you play against Phoenix, it's never a fun time if that works out. Also, my graveyard should have been placed one tile to the left. I did botch that a little bit. I'm going to go in for a, a Tornado here so we can activate King Tower against the Miner. I think it will help out with subsequent defenses. And he's probably going to click a Golden Knight ability and just pray that he can find a way through. Remember, he has arrows, so he doesn't have Tornado in the deck, I don't think. He's just going to keep Minering and spamming me. I feel like he's going to be set up for disappointment at this point. Oh, that's three Phoenixes. That's a lot of them. That's a, that's a whole horde of them, guys. You know, I thought about this for a second. If a whole bunch of multiple crows is like a murder, wouldn't a horde of Phoenix be a massacre? Because they just do way more damage than crows would. Crows would be like a one elixir cost card. They'd be a weak Pokemon. But a horde of Phoenixes, those things are scary. Unless you have the deck like us with Tombstone to perpetually distract them, Ice Wizard to slow them down, Tornado and Baby Dragon to finish them off. Even if you play against the Broken Bird spam deck, you're not going to have any problems with this graveyard deck. And in case you guys were wondering, this guy, even though he skillessly spammed a ton of stuff at the river, was an insanely good player. He finished at 7,793 trophies at 900 in the world. So we've upgraded to having the superior Sir in our deck. The King of the Skeletons is absolutely overpowered for his two elixir ability. You can essentially get a graveyard on the map that walks. Obviously, it can't go directly on the tower, but it's still really strong. 
and when you have a champion in your deck, when you hit double and triple elixir, because you can't get two champions on the map at once, what it allows you to do is get back to a card by only cycling three cards. So if I have my Skeleton King, I cycle it in the back, then I go for like a Baby Dragon, and then a Barbarian Barrel and a Tornado, I can get back to a Graveyard if I had cycled that right after my Skeleton King. So it allows me to have a much better matchup against other Graveyard decks, and it allows me to play safer and outcycle my opponent when they feel like they have good answers to me. So like, let's say they have a poison. We can maybe even outcycle that by going in for multiple graveyards and triple elixir before they get back to a poison. And the only reason we're able to do that is because it only takes three cards to cycle back to the graveyard when we have the Skeleton King already on the map. This guy is likely going to be running some really cheesy Phoenix spammy deck because everyone at the higher ladder runs it. Phoenix is still the best card in the game even after the nerf, but you know, even if you're not running Monk or Phoenix, you can still win with this deck. It's really good. So I'm going to go in for an Ice Wizard here because we don't want the Valkyrie to touch my tower. That would have been two Valkyrie shots, and that is too, too many. Interesting to see the dude have Mother Witch as well. Like, it just feels like an Elixir Cold deck, but it isn't. So it's interesting. It's kind of wild. He's probably going to go in for, like, some more Graveyards on me whenever he gets the option. But playing against a Graveyard Mirror matchup when your opponent has Mother Witch is always a little bit scary. However, because we have Poison, we can always Poison on top of the Mother Witch and get some good value. And knowing that the Mother Witch has out of cycle means that I can go in for a graveyard and capitalize on that when he drops a 7 elixir or a 6 elixir investment now with the Barbarian Hut. I keep thinking that it's 7 elixir because I just don't see it anymore after the buff. It's still a pretty good card, but it's not a top tier card that most people can fit in their deck. Because there's so many cards in Clash Royale, there's going to be cards that are just better than others. And even if a card is good, maybe it's not played that much. So this guy is going to go for a Phoenix and he's going to spam a graveyard on me. Uh, I'm a little bit scared about this. I'm going to wait, I'm going to Tornado back his Valkyrie. And the reason why I do that is you're going to notice that my Princess Tower is now targeting his Graveyard Skeletons. And if that happens, then we're able to clean up the Graveyard a lot easier because there's no tank for the Graveyard. We're not wasting all of our Princess Shots on those sometimes Skeletons that are on the outside corner. Our Tower is able to focus those off instead. Pretty important stuff to do. The Tombstone in the back is nice too because that's going to be able to prevent the Graveyard Skeletons from stocking up on our Tower. So even though this guy's got Mother Witch, we might have a better counter to Graveyard with our Tombstone. I don't like going in for Poisons very often, simply because if I do, then I'm kind of relinquishing the fact that, you know, I can't go for a Poison on offense against a Mother Witch. Okay, so he's going in for another Mother Witch here. I'm just going to click the Skeleton King ability so we can distract the Phoenix for a little bit longer. Another he's going to stack up multiple Phoenixes. Okay, I've had enough of this shenanigans. I'm Poisoning. Poison kills the Phoenix Egg, and it kills the Phoenix Egg on your opponent's side of the map too. So in case you didn't know that, now you know. Definitely do that. He's just going to keep spamming me. The Phoenix Egg is dead. You're going in for another graveyard. Okay, this is annoying by now. I have seen a countless amount of graveyards on my map. He's going to go for a poison. If only he whiffed. And he, oh, yeah, he did with the, the tombstone. He wasn't able to hit the tombstone. That's pretty funny. We are back to poison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in for a graveyard. And I'm going to go in for the graveyard with Baby Dragon since he used the Phoenix. Since the Phoenix is going to be his best counter to stopping the graveyard. Because he can't stop the Baby Dragon from crossing the river. The Baby Dragon locks onto the tower, doing a ton of damage. And because we're going opposite lane of the Mother Witch, I won't actually have to worry about that. The Mother Witch is going to give him damage, but not on the side that he wants. So it's pretty funny that he's continuing to do that spam. I can go in for another Tornado so we can pull back the Valkyrie. And I think that the Phoenix Egg is going to take the precedence, unfortunately, but it's fine. As long as the Phoenix Egg dies, that's actually a little bit better for us, actually. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I was like, wow, it's unfortunate we're targeting the Phoenix Egg. But if that Phoenix Egg wasn't targeted, we might have just lost the game. He's going to stop this baby dragon from crossing the river, there's no doubt. Yeah, that's what he was, should have done earlier, but he didn't do it. Um, I'm going to go in for a Skeleton King ability, and then I'm going to go for Poison. The reason why I go for a Skeleton King ability right into the Mother Witch is because it doesn't necessarily matter. Maybe even better for me to do that, if you think about it. Because if we go in for the Skeleton King ability into that, and he gets cloned up little piggies, it's not going to do much damage to us. I'm not poisoning whenever I, when he wants me to, just because if I poison on defense, then I'm not able to save the poison for the Mother Witch. I said this before, it's just, I want to reiterate it again. Wait, the Skeleton King crossed the river! Now the Skeleton King is going to be tanking for the Graveyard Skeletons. Oh, he messed up with a Valkyrie just a tad bit later. It cost him the entire game. And that's why I was tornadoing back his Valkyries. And whenever he was going in for a graveyard with stuff at the river, I always made sure to tornado it back so it wasn't tanking for the graveyard skeletons. The one time he messed up and let my Skeleton King through to tank for the graveyard, that was the end of our friend. Even if your opponent's using Phoenix, Mother Witch with Graveyard Poison, you can still win with the original Graveyard Splash Shard. All right, it's time to see if we can keep it up with the Skeleton King. You guys know the deal. This is one of my favorite cards to play and one of my most miserable hated cards to play against. 
The two elixir ability pops off with serious value every single time. I kind of wanted to like let the royal ghost go in the right hand side and not necessarily care that much. But if I had done that, he might have supported the royal ghost with something else. So then I couldn't have activated king tower. Like if he sees a skeleton king cycled in the back and he's good at the game, he knows that I'm going to try to do something with that royal ghost on the other side that I'm not trying to defend. So he's going to lose his hunter. He's going to log it. Okay, he's still going to lose the hunter. So he didn't want the Skeleton King to survive at any remnants of HP because if I had that still stay alive, I would have been able to go in for the ability and make it really bad for our opponent. Okay, the Baby Dragon isn't able to go in for a Graveyard right now because I obviously don't have a Graveyard in Cycle, so I just have to chill. Maybe go for the Ice Wizard and then... Going in for a Royal Ghost wouldn't even matter because he's going to have a Royal Giant deck. Oh, that makes sense. I was wondering why he was so lackadaisically cycling his Royal Ghost there and not carrying. And, you know, it checks out. This guy doesn't care because he doesn't need to carry. If he activates King Tower, he's got the Royal Giant to shoot across the river. Okay, so the Ice Wizard is going to give us some damage with the Barbarian Barrel tanking. We got the full bar, the mobile gaming athlete, the Skeleton King. Maybe we can go in for a graveyard when we get the chance. It's hard for us to go and click the Skeleton King ability and get value here. It might be able to kill the Fisherman. I'm hoping that it at least kills the Fisherman. If I drop two Elixir that's full bar and doesn't kill the Fisherman, I'm going to be so sad. I think we're okay here. I can get a Tombstone down and then block the Royal Giant and push it back. It's probably going to log this, but it's fine. It's still going to be able to kill the RG without any damage, I think. Don't disappoint me. Okay, good job. So we're losing the game by 500 HP. I think that Royal Giant might be one of the more difficult matchups with this deck, but since you end up having the Tombstone and maybe like the Skeleton King Ice Wizard, you will be able to find ways of defending. It's just difficult because if they log or Electro Spear on the Tombstone Skeletons, you don't have that much more damage per second or distractions. But if their Electro Spirit's out of cycle, you gotta take advantage of that and try to graveyard them so then they can't get as many good trades. Like he's gonna try to go and get some counter push here, maybe in the right hand side, but he's gonna have like a dissected push. You would kind of want your Royal Giant to be supported by the Royal Ghost, but since it's in opposite sides, this is going very well for us. Also, I can activate King Tower here. It's, as I said, it's not going to matter that much, but it will help out against people going in for like Royal Ghosts in the future. So just something to keep in mind, even against Royal Giant, if you are able to defend for a 3 for 3 trade, just activate King Tower, it might come out clutch in the end. So I'm going to go in for the Skeleton King ability and then try to get the Baby Dragon to lock on the tower. Let's go! It's also hitting the Hunter and the tower. That's exactly what we needed. Finishes off the Hunter. You kind of need to go opposite lane in this matchup. If they are going same side as you and they're defending and then they're getting too much counter push, you're going to lose the game every time. It's just something that I learned. It's not necessarily the most fun way to lose. I'm going to Tornado so we can pull everything back. I think the Skeletons will come up clutch here, depending on what happens. I need that Royal Ghost to die. All right, I'm going to go in for a Graveyard here with the Skeleton King tanking. I'm going to try to get a lot of souls collected with the Skeleton King. If he doesn't play this well and he lets it cross the river, we could get a W. Okay, that Bar Barrel might have been a bit risky. I could lose this game because of that Barbarian Barrel, but I'm going to try to just all in here and see what happens. Skeleton King's still alive. We're going to get the Skeleton King collecting all the souls, and it's going to be able to get a so many hits. Let's go. Wow. Holy. I think all he had to do was lightning me there, and he would have won. I was saying that that Barbarian Barrel was risky because I had no answer to the Royal Ghost, but the Barbarian Barrel was what won me the game. The Fisherman pulled the Barbarian Barrel instead of the Skeleton King, allowing the Skeleton King to lock directly on the tower, dealing over a thousand damage. As you guys can see, Skeleton King is one of the most clutch cards in the game and way better than Knight and Valkyrie on offense because it can take an entire tower by itself. Even top tier Royal Giant players like this guy with a legacy best of over 7,800 trophies really have to respect the Skeleton King spam or they'll lose absolutely everything. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.